Hi Planner fam, welcome back to Best Laid Plans and it is time for another opera inspired monthly spread. And the opera I have chosen for July is Die Zauberflot or The Magic Flute by Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart. This is probably one of his better known works and even if you have never seen it, you're probably familiar with the melodies from it. It is possibly one of the most performed operas in the world and the characters I've chosen to focus on for the spread are t um, two of the major characters in the ensemble, which is Papageno, our joyful bird catcher, and the infamous Queen of the Night. So um, what I'm going to be using for this spread is a ton of different sticker books, but the only thing I will be using out of those sticker books for the most part until we get toward the end is actually going to be these kind of star stickers in shades of blue. Um, and what I'm going to do is sort of attempt to recreate the amazing starfall like burst centerpiece that um, was portrayed in the original illustration this is from from the opera. I'll just stick it on screen so you can see it's very very impressive stage design. So I will be attempting to recreate that here. So that's going to be kind of meticulous but that does mean that I have more time to talk about the opera itself and its history and some of the characters. So if you would like to stay tuned for that. Um, and I will uh, probably not have a spoiler alert because this is like a really well-known opera um, and I just feel like I'm not really spoiling anything. So um, if you don't want spoilers, I do recommend um, you can find, I believe on Netflix, the Kenneth Branagh movie version of this opera, which is in English. Um, and he actually sets his um, staging of it during the First World War, and it's really interesting. Um, it also has the Queen of the Night uh, riding it on a tank, which is pretty awesome. Uh, she's, she's the villain we love to love. So I will be including music, and we'll just kind of talk about the opera briefly, um, but I will make sure to leave a, a link in the description box to any like washi that I'm using from like Simply Gilded um, or any sticker shops that I have stickers from that I'm using. Um, these were just photos I printed on cardstock, so I have those ready. And then I will be focusing probably most of the decoration for this from Cosmic Watercolor. Um, I also pulled Stargazer and Zodiac. So we'll see um, and reach for the stars. So hopefully I will have a better idea of the final decor, but I want to go ahead and start that main piece and then um, that way I'll have that built out. Now one of the things that I have to do is to put this down and then figure out how I want to cut across because I don't want to put her dead center, but I do want the same effect. So I think I'm going to have to put her this way and then maybe cut and punch around the side of the um, moon shape here. So that is probably the first thing I'm going to do. And let's get started. Okay, so I have to preface this whole plan with me by saying this. The magic flute is inherently sexist and racist, mostly because Mozart and his Freemason buddies were. There, I said it. So why is this opera still so popular in this day and age? Well, I think the lasting legacy of the music and the ability of directors like Julie Taymor, for instance, to adapt the story and characters into the modern day is really what has kept this opera in the popular imagination. The story follows Tamino, a prince fleeing a dragon, who is rescued by the ladies of the Queen of the Night. Befriended by the lovable and highly relatable birdcatcher, Papageno, he is tasked by the Queen of the Night to rescue her daughter, Pamina, from the wicked Zarastro, whom she describes as an evil wizard. To accomplish this, she bestows on them gifts of magic bells and, for Tamino, a magic flute, hence the title of the opera. 
In reality, we discover that Sarastro is a benevolent leader of a generic holy order of definitely not the Freemasons, and he took Pamina away to save her from her evil mother, the Queen. Pamina is only suffering under his care because of, cue the racism, a black guy named Monostatos, who is the captain of Zarastro's guard. When she explains this to him, Zarastro has him punished, and he ends up later joining forces with the Queen, who ends up being the true villain of the piece. You know, being a powerful woman, she must be evil. Thanks, Mozart. Now that my queen on her moon throne is here, I am going to add some cloud stickers from the Cosmic Watercolor. And don't worry that we are building this out um, the way we are because we're going to add colorful boxes, um, things like that, to put in any important dates. But here is our clouds. So what do modern opera stagings do with all this highly volatile subtext? Well, most modern stagings I've seen, both in film and on stage, set up the story as a custody battle of sorts between the Queen and Zarastro, meaning they make Zarastro Pamina's father, which makes a way better case for his taking her and the animosity between him and the Queen. The Holy Order is stripped of all its Masonic context and made more inclusive, often multi-ethnic and gender fluid. Monostatos is then portrayed as a power-corrupted outlier. I like how Kenneth Branagh's version did this. This removes that racist, sexist connotation of the 18th century libretto while still telling a really great story with sweeping music. Pamino and Tamino are then portrayed as going through trials together to prove their worthiness, ultimately coming together to bridge the war of the sexes played out by the Queen and Zarastro. The Queen's demeanor becomes more about narcissism and control, rather than just her being a woman, and although the scene where she commands her daughter to kill her own father, if we follow modern stagings, and bring her his holy son amulet is terrifying, I can't help but love that aria. I think we all love the Queen of the Night's second act aria, even if we all can't sing it. At least Dada Damrao can. All right, now it is time for all of the stars. And I'm just gonna try to lay them out in no specific like color order, just trying to make sure I'm using as much like blue as possible. So how does the story end? Tamino, Pamina, and Papageno must go through trials to prove they are worthy to join the order. But when Tamino and Pamina struggle, but ultimately do fine, mostly thanks to the magic flute, Papageno really doesn't want to join up. He'd rather just be a happy husband and father, and I love him. Papageno is such a fun character, and later on in the opera, when he finally finds his Papageno with the help of magic bells, it's such a happy and joyous occasion, you want to sing along with them. In the end, evil is vanquished, Truth triumphs, and Pamina and Tamino come together to lead the people, a fairy tale ending to Mozart's most popular opera. Kenneth Branagh and Ingmar Bergman have both created fantastic movie versions of this opera, the latter being a more traditional staging and the former being adapted for a World War I type setting, which means we get Queen of the Night on a tank. Yes! <laughs> but I also really love the child-friendly English-language adaptation the Metropolitan Opera has put on by director Julie Taymor. I think we can acknowledge the problems with the original libretto while removing them in modern stagings. The story becomes simpler, the music is still mesmerizing, and it allows for broader casting and better direction. Because of that, I can still count The Magic Flute as one of my favorite operas of all time. Maybe just not Mozart's original version. Sorry, Amadeus. And now, back to planning.
And from this big Star Kaler book, I found a really good quote that I thought was appropriate for the magic flute, which is, I trust myself and know my inner wisdom is my best guide. So we're gonna just put this over here. So looking at the spread where it is now, I am pretty positive I will not be adding extra washi to this. I think that it has quite enough and I feel like if I added washi even just like at the bottom it would just detract from it. Uh, but I am going to go into the Zodiac sticker book because they have these really pretty black background silver star stickers and I want to just add those throughout for more of a dimensional effect. All right, and the very last stickers that I'm going to add are going to be from the Brights book, and it is just some music notes for over by the flute here. All right, so many, many star stickers and 11 different sticker books later, I think this is going to be the finish before the pen product, and I'm actually quite pleased. I think that it turned out really, really good. And I am really happy with the effect. Um, and you definitely know which opera it is because it says Magic Flute right there. So I'm gonna go ahead and fill in the after the pen that I know about. And I am contemplating if I should do a blue ink or a black ink. And I think I am gonna stick to a black ink um, because it will look a, it'll match the um, the stickers from the Zodiac book, and I think it'll make these colors pop more. So I am going to just start filling in the pen, and then I will be done. Ich Vogelfänger bin bekannt bei alt und jung im ganzen Land. Weiß mit dem Locken umzugehen und mich aufs Pfeife zu verstehen. And ta-da! Here is my finish after the pen. Um, well, partially finished. I'll have other things to write in for sure, but I left room and boxes for that. But this is what I know of so far, and it is all filled in. I am so excited. This is one of my favorite operas. It's one of the first operas I ever like was introduced to um, through the Ingmar Burma field mainly, but... Um, it's just become one of my favorites and I do love the Queen of the Night. So I was very excited to recreate her grand entrance. So this is going to be one of the opera spreads that I do this year. I'm not doing them every month, but I want to continue to do them. If there is an opera you are interested in my trying to do a, um, spread of let me know some are easier than others i feel like magic flute is very easy to translate into like a decorative planner um but there's definitely other operas that i've considered that are probably much more difficult to do uh, but i'm really happy to try anything if that's something you guys are interested in so this is the final product and i just absolutely love how this turned out. I love the color hues. It just, it and it fits also kind of with July with the starburst kind of looking like fireworks. I just think it looks great. And I'm really, really excited that I got to do this because it's one of my favorite opera. So please like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell and uh, join me again next week on Wednesday for a new planner video. Your support means so much to me and I hope you have a fantastic rest of your month. Bye. 